Hey, I'm Max and welcome to this Unreal Engine 5 beginner tutorial. By the end of this tutorial right here, you should have a simple game like this where you can jump on cubes, you can reach the checkpoint to have a cool particle effect. You have a cube that moves around and you can jump on it and move with it. You have over here a fake cube that you can just walk right through it and a cube that goes invisible and visible every couple of seconds. You can also die if you hit the spikes and when you hit retry, you go back to your last checkpoint. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe. Okay, so to get started, the first thing you will need is to install the Epic Games Launcher if you don't have it already. If you don't have it, I'll put the link in the description to go download it. Once you open up Epic Games, you need to make your account and then click over here on Unreal Engine. Then you click on Library, Plus, and then select whichever one you have for 5 and above. So if you're watching this video in 2022 or later, most likely you will have something here starting with 5, so you pick that and then you install it. But as you can see in my case, there's none yet because it's still in early access. So if you're watching this video early after the uploading, you will need to download the early access and for this you go to the other link in the description and you simply scroll down all the way to try UA5 early access today. And then you click on it and it's going to have an option to open in Epic Games, which will add it to your library right here. But like I said, if you're watching this a little bit later, most likely you can just add it from here. At the time of recording this video, the latest version is 5.0.0 Early Access 2, so I'm going to launch that. But you can use the latest one, it's probably going to work just as well. When you open up Unreal Engine for the first time, you should have a menu like this. First, you want to select games here if it's not already selected. Then you want to select the third person example right here. You choose your project location, your project name, I'm just going to call it tutorial. Then you need to choose blueprint because we're not going to dive in C++ for the beginner tutorial. Then we can keep desktop, maximum, we need to make sure to have starter content. And then retracing, it's not needed and we can create it. So this is the basic third person character template. If you hit play over here, you can start playing in the editor. You can move the camera around the player, you can move around and jump. You have some stairs and some cubes to test around. So you can see the template already has quite a bit of features. So this is the template that you should have when you open your project for the first time. If you get a pop-up saying your profile file is out of date, you can click update. So this is the Unreal Engine 5 editor. You can see over here your world and you can move around by holding right click and also pressing WASD to move the camera around. You can also see all of the elements in your world right here to the right. So if I move this down, you can see I have the floor, all of the walls and my light source. So my third person character is right here. And of course, I can move everything to where I want. There are a few features at the top right here, like landscape and mesh painting, but we're not going to use those. You can also add basic elements to your world by going to create here and adding some things like shape and a cube. But we're not going to use this either. Because when you make your own game, you're probably not just going to use cube, spheres, and cylinders. So to import your own meshes into Unreal Engine, it's actually really easy. You just have to open the content drawer right here at the bottom left. Once it's open, you can create your own folder to keep things clean. I'll just call mine tutorial, but you can call it whatever you want. Then you can open it and create another one for meshes because we will have other things like blueprints. And in here, you can simply drag and drop the FBX file from your meshes. So in my case, I'm going to use some stuff that I have from my previous games and I'm going to put them in the description if you want to use them. But feel free to experiment with your own meshes as well, either that you downloaded or that you made, for example, in Blender. In my case, I have over here two static meshes, which are the hair and the spikes. I also have a male character, which is a skeletal meshes because it has a skeleton to move around and my animations in another file. So you have to be careful to not mix things around too much when importing because it can create some problems with the settings. So first I'm going to import my static meshes, which are my spikes and hair. And you can see over here, it doesn't have skeletal mesh checked. And everything else seems fine. Scale one, that's perfect, I'll do import all. And you can see my hair and my spikes are here. Now I'm going to import my male character, which is a skeletal mesh. So you can see by default it is checked because Unreal Engine saw that there was a skeleton on it. Skeleton is set to none, that's perfect, that means it will create one. And my scale is set to one, okay that's good, I'll import all as well. So you can see now my character is right here and it automatically created a physics asset, which is used for the ragdoll. You can see if I open it, 
you can see each part that will be used for the ragdoll each part will be simulated and it also imported a skeleton so you can see each part of the skeleton is imported into unreal engine now i just need to import the animations for my skeleton so i'm going to create a new folder to keep things clean again animations and inside of it i'm going to drag my male animations a very important step here is to select your skeleton so in my case it's male character if you don't select it it's going to create a new skeleton and then you have to retarget your mesh and everything so make sure to not forget this and then export it time that's fine scale make sure it's the same one as your skeleton and we can import that so here i have all of my animations and i can make sure they are working fine by opening them and you can see they seem to work fine make sure after you import something new to save all of your files because if the game engine crashes you might lose everything so go to file save all or just press ctrl shift s and it's going to save them all you can also see that when i imported my meshes it automatically created the materials for them based on what i had in blender but in case you import a mesh one day and it doesn't have a material i'm going to show you how to make one so for example this spike right here does not have a material so you can see it has the world grid material which is the default unreal engine one and it looks very bad so to create one you simply have to right click go to material and then choose a name usually when we work in unreal engine we start materials with m underscore so for example m underscore spikes but you can name it whatever you want then you double click to open it and here you have all of the basic settings for your material so the base color the metallic specular roughness and if you hover over it it's going to tell you a little bit what it does so here it says controls how metal like your surface is specular is the specularity so how much it reflects light roughness is between smooth and rough so matte or diffuse so for now we're going to keep things simple i'm just going to add a base color and some metallic specular and roughness so to add a node you can right click and then search for what you want for example we can search for a scalar parameter and we will have a scalar parameter right here so for example to put something into the base color you might just want a constant three vector because a color has three things which is the r g and b and also if you want the shortcut for this you can press three on your keyboard and then click and it's going to add one every time you click if you want something with two constant you can press two and then click and for one you press one and then click there's also a bunch of other ones like T for texture, L for lerp, but for now we'll keep it simple so you can right click and search for constant tree vector or you can simply press tree and then click. So over here we will put our color we want, I think I'll put like a light gray and then drag it into your base color. So this is how pretty much everything works in Unreal Engine. You click down on a little node and then you link it to another node. So just like this we put a base color on our spike so if we save it's going to compile the shaders and then we can go on our spikes mesh that you get by going in your content browser and double clicking spikes and you can see here the default material we can change it and search for our spikes material m underscore spikes and you can see now our spikes is pretty much white now if we want to add some reflections to it we can first make it metallic so i'm going to press one and then you click to add this or you can go and search for constant like this I'm going to click on it and then go into the value here and put 1 because the metallic is between 0 and 1 so 1 is going to make it very metallic so now if I save this and I go on my spikes you can see it's a little bit more reflective and it looks more metallic than before where it was just plain white next we can add some specular in this case I also want 1 so I'm going to just drag the same one now if we add the roughness at 0 because zero is smooth if you go over it zero is smooth and one is rough you can see that now it becomes very reflective and now you can see that our spikes is very reflective okay so now what if you want to add that spike to your world well of course you could just take the spikes right here and drag it in doing this will create a static mesh actor with simply your static mesh inside of it and you can drag down here and change all of the settings you want but then if you want to add multiple spikes and have each one of them have the same settings and maybe add some behaviors to them, you cannot do it anymore. So this is really just for things that you are never going to change and that are never going to have any sort of behavior to them. In our case, we want the spikes to damage the player later, so we know that we have to make a blueprint for it. So I'm going to delete this and then go in my content drawers, go back to the main folder 
add a new folder for the blueprints and then inside that blueprints folder I'm going to right click go to blueprint class and add a actor the first one at the top this is the most simple blueprint class you can have a pound is going to be an actor with more features a character is a pound with more features but an actor is just the, the base one for everything so we're going to create a actor and I'm going to call it BP underscore just like the material earlier usually when you create a blueprint you start with BP underscore so I'm going to call mine BP underscore spikes and now you can see why we had those things if I had my material called spikes and my blueprint called spikes it would be pretty confusing okay so now I open it up with a double click as usual and I can see over here at the top left my components I can also see my graphs functions variables which are all empty I can see my actor class default so for example start with tick enable okay replication is for multiplayer I think so it doesn't matter uh, actor editor in game so we can hide it a collision things like that so we're not really going to use this for now let's just keep it simple for now so I'm just going to click add over here under the components and then search for static mesh and add the static mesh be careful not to add something like static mesh simulation or instant static mesh we just want static mesh now you can give it a name but I'm just going to keep it called static mesh and then when you click on it so you can see here if I click I see my class defaults but if I click on the static mesh then I see the parameters for my static mesh component in my case all I need to change for now is the static mesh right here so I'm going to click here and then search for my spikes and click on it now you can see my spikes are in my viewport for my actor so this is what my actor will look like and then if at the top left I click compile and then save when I go on my map I can go into my blueprint you can see my BP spikes right here and I can drag it on and it looks the same as before but now it's a blueprint so that means we can add more components to it we can add some events and some behavior to it and also if I change a setting here such as the collision and then I create another blueprint so I drag another one in well they are both going to have the same settings so that's very useful make sure if you ever change anything in the blueprint and you want it to take effect you need to compile at the top left and make sure to save things as you go in case there's a crash or something so now that we saw the basic of a blueprint you might be wondering is that character over here a blueprint and the answer is yes it's a blueprint that comes with the template so since it's in the template it's over here in our folder and we can actually modify the character to use our own so if we go over here to the top folder the content we can go into third person bp then blueprint and you have the third person character over here so if we double click to open it up we can see the construction script we don't need that the event graph which has the basic behaviors for jumping and moving we're not going to look at that for now and if you go in the viewport you can see the character this character has a capsule component which is for the collision because using the collision on each part of the mesh of the character is useless when just running around it's much more efficient to use a capsule like this it's going to save a lot of power we also have the mesh of course to show the skeletal mesh and we have a camera boom with a follow camera to make the camera follow the player so if we click on the mesh right here the skeletal mesh component so just like the spikes we have over here a mesh but over here it's a skeletal mesh because this is a skeletal mesh component which pretty much means a mesh with a skeleton that can be animated so if I click over here I have my male character that I imported earlier if you don't see it it's either because you didn't import it or you didn't import it as a skeletal mesh so I'm going to click on the male character over here then compile and save and now you can see if I play the game I have my spikes right here that I can collide with and my character that I can move around. So that's it for this part, hopefully you enjoyed. You were already able to import your own meshes, even your own skeletal mesh, create some new blueprints and change the blueprints from the template and even create your own material. So hopefully you enjoyed learning that. In the next part we will make the animations for the player and also talk a little bit about the blueprint basics for the behavior and the events.